Turn your Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. As we set on course, it's a voyage. It's a voyage. We intend to move on this voyage. Proverbs chapter 3. There are several things in your walk with God that you must know. You must keep in view as you navigate. Because any time you lose sight of these signposts, you are likely to make shipwreck of your journey. Proverbs chapter 3 as we begin. I would like to begin from verse 9. Proverbs 3 verse 9. I'd like you to write down the scriptures that we are considering so that when you get back home you can sit back and judge the truth that is in the body that I'm trying to communicate to us. I salute all the men and the women of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Verse 10. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. The word I would like you to underline for which I don't, I don't know if we can go beyond that word in this conference. Honor the Lord. And I need to show you from scripture the end product of men that honor God. And uh, as we move along on the path, we might make some commentaries on several things that are going on in the body of Christ. As we bring the perspective of the word of God as the basis of the truth on those matters. So he says, honor the Lord. How do you honor him? With your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. It is needful for us to understand that there is a possibility for you to claim to be walking with God and there is no honor for God in your ways. Let's press it further. That scripture is so light. It doesn't carry the gravity, but it has introduced the subject but it doesn't hold the power to reveal the gravity of the subject. And so we may need to consult with other scriptures. Right? i like us to do Malachi chapter 1 before we go to 1 Samuel um, chapter 2. Then the subject, the gravity will begin to come out. As it begins to come out, I'd like you to see, take note of the path that we are treading through the scriptures. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. Remember where we are starting from. It says what? Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So when we talk about first fruits, it is related to increases. Increases. So we will do the permutation when we have sufficient illumination from the word of God. Just like my pastor said, poverty is a choice. Media people, are you there to help me? Malachi chapter 1 from verse 6. He said, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, this is God speaking. What is he asking for? Where is my father? Now, is it true that in your prayer you pray to a father? You pray to a source. You pray to your sustainer. You ask him for intervention. You ask him for a miracle. You ask him to wave the hand of his glory. To manipulate circumstances and situations. And to cause the lines to fall before you in pleasant places. So that the permutation of your existence will no longer be a mystery. It will fall in place. When you show up, things begin to happen. For that, you consult with God in the place of prayer. And ask him to intervene. He's saying something here. Um, it is in the culture of sons to do what? To honor fathers. It is in the culture of servants to honor masters. If we have accepted the first principle, then if I be a father, where is... What? What did he say again? And if I be a master... Where is my fear? So, Jehovah is asking us a question. 
that there is supposed to be an honor that is attributed to the fact that he plays the role of sovereign over our lives and just in case that honor is not in place there is a breach in our contract as we relate with him as father please don't just give me my scripture he says that says the lord of hosts just in case you are confused about who is talking unto you O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised thy name then he went further to bring perspective he said you offer polluted bread now are you still here the subject i'm trying to reveal is a subject of honor and dishonor the first sign post that you must keep before your eyes as you navigate with god is the issue of honor and what anytime you forget this principle you become like the sons of belia now we will go into the facts later they say you offer polluted bread on my altar ye say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say that the table of the lord is contemptible that means you know when when god god actually told the priest the kind of offering that you can offer before me it's not because god was interested in the blood or the flesh but he wanted to establish a culture of honor they came to a point where they trivialized the culture of offering to god so much so that they brought sacrifices that were polluted they brought lambs that were blind they brought, brought offerings that were crippled they had forgotten the essence of what they do yes next verse if he offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil don't forget the subject is what and if he offer the lame and the sick is it not evil or offer it now unto thy governor will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person said the lord there is a culture and through the studies of the scriptures as we are going to do this evening and subsequently you will come to realize that this issue of honor is tied to our giving come with me i need another scripture before we begin to do the before we begin to go deeper first samuel chapter 2 first samuel chapter 2 from verse 12 now the sons of eli were sons of belia they knew not the lord and the priest custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice the priest servant came with the flesh with the flesh was in sitting while the flesh was in sitting with a f- flesh hook of three teeth in his hands and he stuck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all of the flesh hooks brought all that the flesh food hooks brought up the priest took for himself so they did in shiloh unto all the israelites that came hither also before they burnt the fat the priest's servant came and said unto the man that sacrificed give flesh to roast for the priest and he will not have sodden flesh of thee but raw and if a man said unto him let them not fail to burn the fat presently and then take as much as thy soul desireth then he will answer him nay but thou shalt give it to me now and if not i will take it from thee by force and this is Eli's children. People are bringing offerings to God. And there is, there is an allocation for the priest in the offering. Hallelujah. Now, in the culture of giving the priest this allocation, the priest doesn't get raw meat. He either gets boiled meat, he picks out of meat from the pot while it is boiling, or he gets meat 
after the fat has been burned. That is a culture. But we see these guys, they come to the place of sacrifice and they demand for meat when it has not yet entered the pot. They demand it raw. Are you with me? Now, this act of dishonor, as we read through the Bible, because I'm going to trace it from the beginning to the ending, Genesis to New Testament to you are going to see that these acts of dishonor are tied to the culture that is sustained around giving. You see, working with God does not start and end with speaking in tongues. As we press on, you will find out that a day came in Israel when there was an attempt to modernize how to carry the ark. Meanwhile, the prescription for the movement of the ark was defined. The ark was to be born on the shoulders of four men. But it came to pass after the ark was seized and spent some time in the land of the Philistines, did damage to their altars and the idols in the room of their imagery they decided to transport the ark with a new cart it was philistine technology and the moment israel saw it they were supposed to revert back to prescription but they began to sing praises to god and the technology that was used to convey the ark was alien to god's ways instead of God to come and inhabit the praise of his people, he came that day and he killed. So, sons of Eli, they began to invent a new style of retrieving the portion that they want. Are you with me? Which was not consistent with the stipulated order. And in that, they dishonored God. Let, let's go on. The, the, the story is very long. Because I'd like you to see God's utterances that were made consistent to this situation. Jump to verse jump from 17, jump to 22. And it now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you do such things? For I hear your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If a man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat him? Notwithstanding, they had came not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would what? Slay them. When you find a man, meanwhile, these days, when we bring corrective teaching to the body of Christ to uh, make people come back into alignment, the ridicule us and the reason for the ridicule is because it has been predetermined the council of heaven that such men have been yes raised up for for the slaughter the reason why they did not hear in repenting when it had to do with an issue of honor was because it had already been concluded in heaven that they will be used as an example to reveal the justice system that is captured above follow me um, let's jump to verse 27 no 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 we read from what 22 to 25 all right so jump to 27 and there came a man of god unto eli and said unto him thus saith the lord did i plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house 
And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest to offer upon my altar to burn incense and to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, this is God, kick ye at my sacrifice. What is the subject that we are considering again? He said, wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering which I have commanded in my habitation. And thou honorest thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of the people of Israel. Now the people were giving God the offering. It was not the priest they gave. But the priests made themselves fat with the chiefest. Meanwhile, they did not follow the lot. There was a lot system that was used to identify what portion belonged to the priests. The priests didn't have the ability to choose. By that lot system, it was anything that the three fingered fork touches. And it brings out of the pot where it is being boiled. That belongs to the priest. That means you will not see what you are choosing. It is anything that comes out that is the priest portion. But they decided why it is raw, they can see it. They say, Give me that the roundabout. All right, let's go. We'll start, and I'd like you to, to, to follow. He said, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said thee that thy house and the house of thy father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. This is the principle. For them that honor me I will what? Honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And all of these matters have to do with the attitude of people towards the Lord's offering. They that honor me will I honor. And they that despise me will be what? Will be lightly esteemed. Don't forget where we are coming from. Honor the Lord with what? With your substance. That's not all. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase. So we are going to have to analyze the principle of first fruit as we go on in the teaching subsequently. Are you still with me? They that honor me will I honor. That was, this is God's educational system. It, it's not part of the prophecy. It, it's, it's God now educate. Say, this is my way. They that honor me, them will I honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So let's hear the judgment now. Behold, the days come. That I will cut off thy arm and cut off the arm of thy father's house. That there shall be, not be an old man in thy house. That means life expectancy has been compromised. And you find the people that cannot live beyond 60 years. Not because they went and built an idol and they are worshipping it. Because they decided to dishonor God. Say that no old man will ever exist within thy borders because they that honor me will I what honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Is that clear? Come with me. Let's move on. I would like us to analyze this principle in the lives of the patriots. And I, I want us to see why they became great in the sight of God. You know the Bible speaking about John the Baptist. He was not yet conceived 
and the angel that brought tidings about his arrival said he shall be great in the sight of God. Bro, what exactly makes a man great in the sight of God? Let us try to analyze and see. It will take us three days to finish this teaching. Meanwhile, I came with five points. Five things you need to be careful about when you are walking with God. But it's obvious we can do only one for three days. Watch me. Ah. Mm. All right. Let's check Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 3 to 7. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 3. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Did you see that? And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Now, I'd like us to analyze the two offerings. Cain brought leftovers. Abel brought the first link. See, it's the principle of honor that is at work here. I hope you know in your tithe, we'll soon come into tithing. Because if time permits, I will show you the three kinds of tithes in the Bible. If time permits. But I, I think time will not permit. I hope you know tight is 10%. <laughs> but unfortunately, not every 10% is tight. I know you have not heard this before. In the 100%, there are 10 10%. It is the first 10% that is tight. You give tight before you spend the rest. If you have spent the rest, it means you have given the accursed thing. You have used it for a mundane use because you do not honor the law. It is the. You are not? Oh, you don't like my. Mm. You know, I allowed Pastor Hills to finish his own delivery so that you will know that I am not teaching what I'm teaching because I want to do the play the role of Pastor Hughes. I came to teach you the signposts that you need to look at if you are working with the invincible God called Jehovah. You want to last on the pulpit. You want to fulfill the full impact of your calling. Whereas many people die on pulpit. You, if you are sick and you come there, you receive life. Don't forget what God said. He said, they that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me will be lightly esteemed. That's um, Ropo's word. He likes <coughs> highly esteemed. If that's not all. They are also lightly esteemed. So the guy, the first fruits, the first babies that his head produced was what he gathered and gave God as an offering. This my guy gave God after he had finished harvesting and then he has done what he wanted to do. There were some leftovers. He, he presented the leftovers to God. And the Bible says that God had respect, first of all, to Abel and then to his offering. According to the principle that says, they that honor me, I will what? Honor. So Cain was lightly esteemed. Second example. Adam and Eve. We need to know what the accursed thing is.
All right, let's do one. Adam and Eve, Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15, the Bible says, And the Lord took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not. Eat, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Are you with me? You see, you can eat all, just like tight. You can eat the remaining. There is a part that is mine. Hmm? And thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, if you encroach into that which is accursed and the meaning of accursed means that it belongs to God is dedicated to God it is sacrilege for that which is dedicated to God to be put to human mundane use it is a manifestation of lack of honor for that which is God's portion to be tampered with why I say you should not eat it I don't even need to explain to you however if, if it comes to pass that in all of this wild field that you do not find satisfaction and you need to come to this place to take that which I had said you should not eat then you will surely die. You see, it's an accosting. It's a no-go area. So in life there are things that are no-go areas. Why? Those are the things that belong to God. And a man that honors God in his heart will give him his portion. Meanwhile, the scripture we started with says what? Honor the Lord with your substance. It is your substance. Huh? You see, the great monarch of Zion, first of all, handed it over to you. And then now told you, honor me. Because the principle here is not about the money. The principle here is about the state of your heart. And how God is in your eyes. It is tested every time. He gives you his own portion. He would, you know, have you ever taken a loan in the office? They deduct it from source. So it doesn't get to you. So that you don't become creative. You understand that? God is aware of that method of deducting from source. But he gives you all. He doesn't deduct from source. So that your heart can be tested. Whether there is honor for God in it. And Cain gave God leftovers. And there was a revelation of God that was on the heart of Abel. That made him give the first links of his flock. And the Bible says that God had respect. Let's go on. That's the second. Adam and Eve. They trespassed and entered into the forbidden area. And life cannot be good when you trespass into that area. I'm still building a case for honor and dishonor. Very soon we are going to launch on the anti-tight movement that people like Daddy Freeze are launching. And Abel Damina. Those are men that don't know God. Because what they are trying to do is to make Israel a cost so that we'll fall in the day of battle. They are trying to compromise the delicate fabric of honor and dishonor. Just stay with me. We see the same principle at work in the life of Joseph in Potiphar's house. In the book of Genesis chapter 39. Stay with me as we build step by step. Genesis chapter 39.
Genesis 39. First of all, we'll do from 4 to 6. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not aught he had saved the bread which he did eat and Joseph was a goodly person and um, well favored and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said lie with me and he refused and said to his master this is, was his defense the reason for refusing behold my master would it not what is with me in the house and he had committed all into my hand there is none greater there is none greater in this house than I neither had he kept back anything from me but what did that's forbidden territory you see so are you here now so the man understood the principle of honor that the only thing that Potiphar did not give unto his charge was you. So it will be an abomination unto God. See, for me to now have dealings with you, you are not under my power. Joseph was a man that understood honor and stayed outside of the range that was not committed into his hands. Problems begin when you try to explore areas that are not committed unto you, it is an indication of the fact that you lack honor for God in your heart. Many people have not been able to rise. So many speak in tongues. But when you look at their life, there is no progress at all. Because the fact that the Lord's hand is upon you, there will be evidences to show that there is a covenant that supports your existence. No evidence to show it is because some of these signposts have been violated. Joseph! Do you realize that if Joseph had slept with that woman, she would have arranged for him to be adopted? Because we were never told that Potiphar had a son, had a child. There is some level of security that would have come to Joseph on the account of, of, of accepting her, her offer. But he was a man of honor in his heart. And it would be a breach of covenant for him to trespass into territories that have not been committed to him. That was the same thing that Adam did. God told him his boundary. Come with me. Let's continue our Bible study. Now we need to take another example. Achan. When I finished with my examples before we start teaching. Eka. Joshua chapter 6. I say we are going far. You, you want to walk with God? <laughs> you must know several things never to ignore. I was in the house with my wife. And with a few people that were staying with us. And we were praying on the 1st of January. I don't know what year it was. And we are saying God. This is the beginning of a new year. We're in need of your help. We're in need of your support. We're in need of your protection. We are vulnerable with, without you. Come and help us. And in the midst of that prayer, God spoke to me. And what did he say? He said, give me a hundred thousand. Every month. I touched my wife. I said, oh, we have a problem. It was so loud, I could not, I could not 
deny it. So I touched her. I said, God just spoke to me now. And what he said is that we should give him a hundred thousand. The meaning of that is the only way we can survive on what will be left is that nobody falls sick, there's no problem with the car, and we are not paying NEPA bills. And meanwhile, we may, we may need not also to be eating three times in a day because <laughs> then she now told me that if it's the eating aspect, that one is not a challenge. We, we can eat as many times, but we see there are different kinds of soup. I see different kinds of Oko, have you heard of it? <laughs> there are different kinds of soup. I said, okay, okay. Well, she was more enthusiastic about the obedience than I, I was. She didn't even think about it. She just said, well, huh? me, I said, how? So, well, I was not doing what I was doing outside of her knowledge, and she was in support. So, we now say, it was difficult to to raise the hand and say yes. But at the end of the day, the hand reached up. Yes, Lord. Do you know from that day till today, I have not violated them? Because that has become an additional enclave that is a God zone. He will deliver into your hand all, including his own. Then he will see if you forgot how many years is his now? This is 11 years. Do you know what? Because we are accepted as a family to do what God requested, that same month, our chief executive was to be given, no, he was given a honorary PhD degree from the University of Agriculture. And then he now decided to come to the University of Agriculture to establish a foundation. So all roads led to Makod. We had to go to the toll gates to get him. Took him to half heaven. The man came and he looked like this. I said, are these air conditioning units functional? I said, yes. The last time I checked, they were, they were functional. He did like this. He said, no, no, no. I'll stay at the government house. Before I knew it, then it was a swamp that was in power. Sent vehicles to come and pick him up. Meanwhile, that man is my neighbor in the village. <laughs> so before he, he finished looking at the, the ceiling, I touched him. I told him, this is my name. So he now went to government house. You know, the man likes shouting, but when he knew that we were neighbors from the village, he stopped. It. So, <laughs> he went to government house. Do you know that little discussion we had? And I introduced myself to him. He could not sleep in government house. The kind of AC he wanted was there, but he could not generate sleep. Why? Our executive secretary that everybody is afraid of he is afraid of that man because the chairman of the board he called him he said there's a boy here when you get back go and check for his fire his son name is so and that man now our guy now the real guy he started shaking from that point and then a the real guy came to me and said, We want to escape to Abuja. Can you handle this man? The man knows how to shout. I said, Oh, don't worry, because I know he's my neighbor. <laughs> so, you go, 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 go. You will not hear that anything bad happened. So he now went to Abuja. And indeed, they brought my file and discovered that they have not promoted me for four years. They have not paid us for us to start doing what we said we would do. Just that we said, Yes, Lord. I saw powerful men shake. Do 
That was how my promotion was backdated for four years after a man swore that I would never be promoted in the office again. And the next year, since I was backdated four years, I was still eligible the next year. And they said, that boy. And they had to bring my file and promote me when there was no promotion. It was not promotion time. They don't promote people in June. Just because I said what? The miracles began to happen because I said yes. So it was easy for me to obey. And meanwhile, the factors I was raising up as a challenge with the margin that came upon my promotion, those factors were no longer in view. When he showed me that sign, before I spend any money, I send that portion. For he that honors me, I will honor. And he that dishonors me shall be lightly esteemed. And unfortunately, this matter embodies on offering. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Come with me. We have not finished. Acre. Joshua chapter 6. Stay, stay with me. Joshua chapter 6 from verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventeenth day that they arose early about the downing of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only that, only on that day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord had given you the city. Verse 17 is worthy of note. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are daring to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in her house, because she hid the messengers that was sent. And ye, in any wise, Keep from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are what? They are consecrated unto the Lord and they shall come into the treasure, the treasury of the Lord. He said, Disease. So those items that were designed, are you here, to be consecrated unto the Lord, the terminology for them is that they are the accursed thing. And if you keep the accursed thing, you bring a trouble for yourself and for the whole of Israel. These were the prophetic utterances that Joshua re released before they went to take Jericho. And the law was that because Jericho was the first territory that they were going to conquer by the Lord. First territory. Are you with me? And because of that, everything that comes out of that victory belongs to God. Can you see the principle of honor? So I just give you this background. My real reading is in the next chapter. Chapter Chapter 7 But the children of Israel Committed a trespass In their cursed thing The same thing That God said they should not touch It was a first territory they were conquering So everything that came out of it belongs to God For Achan the son Of Kami And the son of Zabdi The son Of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took their costing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now the anger was not kindled against him. The entire clan became victims of the anger of the Lord because there was one man in the camp that had taken what? Their costing. 
I remember those days of missions. Hallelujah. Those days of missions. Treacherous areas were visited with the gospel. And it came to pass, one of those treacherous areas in, in, our, in, in our state there, suddenly a sister put her hands like this and she could not open them again. Hallelujah. So the sister was brought and put in the circle and prayers were offered. And the hands refused to open. And through prophetic discernment, a, a, a scanning exercise was done for everyone that was in the prayer, prayer meeting. And then we discovered that there was somebody there for which the Lord could not answer our prayer. He had partaken of quick fornication in the night. So when he came to join in the prayer rounds, God could not hear our prayer. And by prophetic insight, he was detected and banished. And the moment he was banished, the sister, her hands opened. Achan was in the camp. He had compromised himself with the accursed thing. Brought Israel into bondage. I will show you this thing from the beginning of the Bible to the ending of the Bible. Eka. You know the story or should we continue? The Israel that conquered Jericho could not conquer a, a, a small nation without a gate. They didn't have a fence. Jericho had an impregnable fence. The fence was a cuboid. You know, cube of sugar. The wall of Jericho did not fall, for, for your information, because it was a cuboid. If it fell, it would be the same height that it was when it was still standing. It sank. Those angels, they, it was a stampede on the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho was the foundation of Rahab's house. A historical perspective captures that seven war horses could ride on the wall of Jericho side by side. There was no way that kind of a war would fall. It was not built to fall. It was never breached before that time. They don't even need to come out if you say you want to attack them. Just to close the gate and go and sit down. <laughs> and this strange army came and the wall sank. And the same army that defeated Jericho could not stand before AI in battle. And, and Joshua came back and laid down to the going down of the sun. And God told him, Arise, Israel has seen. It was not Israel. It was Achan. May you not be the reason why the ranking of the entire corporate army is not sufficient to triumph in battle. Just because you have tampered with their cause thing. And in this context also, it still had to do with the Lord's treasury. Hey, don't worry, let's go on. Let's go to Ananias and Sapphira. All this thing has to do with money. You want to walk with God? Then I need to teach you the principle of honor and dishonor. When you hear men like Daddy Free speaking, these are people that have never labored for the kingdom. They have no scars for Jesus. Suddenly, they believe that there is a calling that they have received to play a corrective role in the body of Christ. Stay with me. Ananias. Sapphira. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 from verse 33. I'm just giving you background before we go into the reading. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul, neither said any one of them that ought of the things which 
he possessed was his own. Please underline that. Neither said any one of them that ought of the things which he possessed was what? You see, you are not with me. You are not seeing what I'm pointing at. In the Old Testament, hmm? unfortunately, in the Old Testament, all that was your due in the Old Testament was to give God a tithe. Are you with me? In the New Testament, the requirement is consecration. That means you own nothing. And that's why the Bible says, none of the guys that possessed those things, it belonged to Lord. What, what did he say? Let, let's read there. And then I will tell you the significance of tithing in the New Testament. And if I have time, I will show you the three kinds of tithe. Where are the media people? Give me my scripture. All right. He said, and the multitude of them that believed were in one heart and of one soul, neither said any one of them that ought of the things which they possessed was his own. In the New Testament, because Jesus paid your bride price and the cost of your bride price happens to be his blood. I hope you know in marriage there, there are no property rights. The wife cannot come and say, this is my property. All of that was swallowed in the arrangement that was made when the bride price was paid. Is that true? So you cannot truly own anything now. However, the significance of tithing in the New Testament, because Jesus spoke about tithing. And there is yet no preacher. Are you with me? That has more authority than Jesus in establishing the perspective of the kingdom. And Jesus said that tithing should continue according to Matthew chapter 23 verse 23. Is that true? Second thing I need to unveil to us. Are you here? I say, are you here? Yes, sir. Second thing I need to un unveil to us. Is that men like Abraham, men like Isaac, men like Jacob, you know they did not operate under the law. Is it true? Because the law came with Moses. And these patriarchs existed before Moses came. What, under what dispensation did they operate? Don't answer. Let the Bible answer. We will come back to, where did we stop? Acts chapter 4. Please don't forget that. Let's just do this. Um, Romans chapter 4 verse 1. Technical man help me. Romans chapter 4. Now the Bible says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father pertaining to the flesh had found? For if Abraham were justified, can you underline justified? That means Abraham experienced justification. It means Abraham was in a situation where God sat as a judge and discharged him and acquitted him from the sin that Adam committed. He was justified. That's, are you here? Justified. And his justification was not by works. Because if it were by works, he would have had cause to glory and there is no provision for human glory within the architecture of salvation. Next verse. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. So Abraham connected with God by faith. So underline believed. And then the Bible says it was logically calculated to be righteousness. The law spoke about a righteousness. He didn't have the ability to furnish. But Abraham lived the reality of righteousness on the account of his faith. Are you still with me? How did you become righteous? Righteousness was imputed to you on the account of your faith, just as it was to Abraham. So Abraham operated new covenant from that time. Mm, don't believe me. Next verse. Now, to him that walketh is the reward, not 
reckoned of grace but of debt. But you know Abraham did not work for it. What he did was that he believed. It means Abraham operated by grace. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Can we go on? So Abraham operated by grace. And how did Abraham begin tithing? Abraham picked tithing from the spirit realm by revelation. In the days of Abraham, when they tithed, it was not that they read from a book that tithing was a law. So Abraham that operated by grace, tithed. How are you operating? By grace, you also tithe. But we tithe for a different reason than the Old Testament saint. Because the Old Testament saint is tithing as a law. We are tithing as an act of honor. However, are you with me? Because I'm still going to bring the example of Abraham into this picture. We are tithing as an act of honor. And for your information, tithing is the fundamental O-level requirement in your work of honor before God. That is the where you start from. Meanwhile, in the Old Testament, tithing was the height of spirituality. Are you with me? In the New Testament, tithing is where you start from in your journey towards achieving total consecration. Are you with me? Second point. You know, it was Melchizedek that came to receive tithes from Abraham. Is that true? Yes. And the Bible says that Jesus is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Just like the Nigerian military is military after the order of the British military. There are many ways to salute, but the Nigerian army salutes like the same way the British army what salutes because it's after the order of the British army. This Melchizedek, the Bible says he had no beginning of days or end of days. Is that true? That means even in eternity, we'll still be giving Jesus tight. Because he doesn't cease to be a priest after the order of Melchizedek just because he is no longer visible in time. His priesthood does not change even in eternity. And the principle of honor is eternal. Before him, we were tied. Did they get you to that point? Now, so the height of spirituality in the Levitical order was that a man was consistent with his tithe. It is the beginning point on our journey towards achieving consecration. Alright? Because in the New Testament our bride price was paid and we no longer have access to property rights. A man that has not given 10% consistently, if the Holy Spirit asks him to give 50%, he will not give. So when he has made a constant practice of 10%, it will be easy for him to move up if the Lord so demands. You see, because he has already practiced the principle of honor. Meanwhile, I practiced tithing for nine years. Eh? Ah, 1994 is when I started tithing. 1994 till 2000 and um, when were we in that house? Wadata? Yes, 2-8. Two eight, two eight. 1994 to 2008, that's how many years? 14. So that's the number of years I practiced tithing. After 14 years of practicing tithing, then he now shows up and says, give me 100,000. You know, you don't have property rights anymore. You will yield because you have imbibed the principle of honor. Then you can begin a walk with God. I practiced the 100,000 for three years. After three years, I was no longer... After three years, I didn't believe that there was anything that God... I was in my possession that God could not take. I'd entered into consecration. 
after three years of obeying that 100,000. And I no longer take, keep record of what I give by God's instruction. It's now a lifestyle. I was in Wuruku, walking on the street, because sometimes it's good to walk. Keep, pack your vehicle and just walk. And the Lord said, give me one million. He said, okay, no problem. Send it to your father in the Lord. Say no problem. I came back home. The first victim of my revelations is my wife. So I called her. I said, "The great monarch." <laughs> he has spoken, and she knew we did not have it. But like she did with hundred thousand, she, she. Two days later. A friend from Brazil, the church I went to preach to in Brazil, the pastor, he sent me 500,000. And he didn't tell me why he was sending it. I said, ah, he's remaining 500. Four days later, somebody came to my house with 500,000. And I told my wife, see, I will release it. He sent me a text message. I saw your seed, your faith will be honored. That's all. There's no need for a phone call. Most of you, and meanwhile, you, you will call to say, uh, you know, <laughs> I did something else. <laughs> the, bus- <laughs> the business I was doing, <laughs> the business I was doing had nothing to do with him. It was just an instruction. So even if he doesn't acknowledge, that is not my business. I did as I was commanded. Yes. I was in the room for two days. My birthday and the next day, because my birthday was a Friday. No, it's Saturday. So I was there Saturday, Sunday. And he spoke clearly. He said, take that to your jeep and give it to this pastor. I went to road safety, changed the particulars from my identity to his identity. They did everything in the computer. Then I took it. He can ask me for every, anything now because after 14 years of tightening, I became a candidate for him to demand from. Knowing that the principle that we are operating in in the New Testament is consecration, so you don't have property rights. But it's not everybody he goes to to make demands. The people that have not modeled the principle of honor, he leaves them in the sidelines. When you see a man ravaged by circumstances and situation, don't be too quick to pity the person. He's not a man of honor. For they that honor me will I what honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. I did that quietly. Do you know? You should I say? Should I talk? After giving that Highlander, I gave it out. Somebody in just now said, Ah, I dreamt. What did you dream about? He said, I dreamt that you were selling that your white car. And then they gave you another car. Then he now tapped the picture of the car that he saw in his dream that they gave me. It was G-Wagon. I said, okay. I've seen it again and again that before God will ask you to give something, the harvest is already ready. And do you know something? It's not only physical harvest it gives you. The harvest in terms of grace, you will never be able to quantify. You, you want to walk in anointing, you will not enter any big anointing through fasting and prayer. Meanwhile, I'm, meanwhile, I'm telling you as a man that has fasted more than you and prayed more than you. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. Some of the things you see some people carry in terms of supernatural resources, 
will never be available to you just because you fast and pray. Is every believer should fast and pray? Oh, oh my God. It's not a big thing, no, it's a lifestyle. And that's why, you know, many of us think fasting and praying will take away the responsibility of being productive. You are joking. God will not exclude you from productivity just because you are praying and fasting. Because praying and fasting is what we do. Is what we that's our lifestyle. That's what we do. Do you understand that? The praying and fasting should produce direction through which we can be productive. Not that we say, okay, our preoccupation is prayer and fasting. Because that's what every Christian should do. Major grace, I have in terms of grace, you know, it's grace. You don't pay for it. But it comes on the lives of men that have fulfilled the requirement of honor. 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 I went to preach in Oka. I, so anybody here that was in that crusade in Oka? I was sick. I thought I would die in the plane from Abuja to Inugu. I landed in Inugu. Thank God I saw a, a chemist there. And we were taught by the old prophets that if you are sick and you must preach, buy deep relief cream. When you arrive at the place, take your bath and apply it on your chest. It will generate it. You will be well for 45 minutes. <laughs> so I was well. The infirmity was so deep that I could not pray. My lungs were locked. My lungs were free the moment I rubbed the deep relief cream. I had only 30 minutes to pray before mounting a crusade podium. The crowd was filled to the road. A sea of hairs. And I had 30 minutes to pray to rise. I sat on the seat in the crusade. There were people, they, they, when I came, they shouted, Why? They didn't know that the man coming here needs Jesus more than them. And I sat down. I said, my prayer was simple. I said, if it is true that you sent me to the youth of Nigeria, anoint me. That was all. I didn't have strength for more prayer until they gave me the mic. I am a Michael. Camila Namoko. Jesus spoke, spoke, he spoke into my ears loud. He said, get out of the way. I want to heal the deaf. I said, oh, you want to heal the deaf? I will, I will join you in the process. <laughs> no need to preach. I invoke the power. 14 deaf people started hearing. The chaplain ran away. The hand of God moved. Maybe he thought I was using charm. He ran away. That oil that came was not prayer. He will always anoint a man of honor. He will always anoint a man of honor. Do you, do you know? The next night, because after that first night, he said I should only pray for the deaf. So I now advise. He didn't tell me this one. No. I did an advertisement. I said, tomorrow bring the dead, bring the cripple, bring all that. that it was me that did that one. And I went back. Meanwhile, after preaching, I became sick. They, they carried me. They, they carried me. Went back. And I was shaking. The ushers ran away. They say, the man, the man they say, hmm. <laughs> the next evening again, I rode that my team. And I came back. I don't know what was healing the people. Then you think it's just fasting and prayer? I fasted and prayed all my life. It didn't make any difference. It made my words tick. But it did not make me anointed. But when I began to walk the path of honor, because only few believers walk that path, he looked upon me with mercy. In our lifetime, this is a promise, in our lifetime, you know this thing they call Islam? It will fall. 
<laughs> the grace that is coming, the grace, when people see it, they will know indeed that Jesus is Lord. They, they don't need to argue. No, no, no. There will be, oh, the way the sick are healed today, that's how the dead will be raised in a few years from now. Mm. Come with me. Acts chapter 33. 4 verse 33. After that, I will round up. We will begin to pray. Tomorrow we will continue. Still on the issue of honor and dishonor. I Meanwhile, I have not entered into tithe. Then I will show you what the meaning of the anti tight movement is about. A people have risen that want to take away the honor of God away from his temple. Sons of Belia, just like in the Old Testament. And when you warn such people and they refuse to repent, it is because God is determined to do what? Yeah. To save. Acts 4.33 Media man, help me. You can't say you have a walk with God when we, we don't see a record of the sacrifices you have made in terms of offering. Because God will demand of you money and things. He will demand. If there's no record of it, it means you have not yet imbibed the principle of honor. Your tongues are a lie. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great of Jesus and great grace was upon them. Next verse there. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Can you see the principle? This was what the whole, no, 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 no. You are not seeing it. See. This is a move of God. This, they are trying to document a move of God here. And in this move of God, they say, neither did any of them lack. Why? Because such as were possessors of lands, it means the Holy Spirit was prompting people to sell their lands and bring the money to the apostles' feet. So that prompting was going on. They sold and they brought. So underline that. So let's move to Ananias and Sapphira. Verse 5, chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with his wife sold a possession. Are you still with me? The guys, there was there was a a, a giving crusade. The Holy Spirit was prompting people that were possessors of lands and they sold it and brought the money they put it at the apostles feet but the bible says there was a certain Ananias he sold his land that means the Holy Spirit prompted him because that was a move at that time it was a move of sacrifice and people were sacrificing stuff now I did not even read to you about that brother that was called Joseph. He was a Levite. And you know Levites did not own properties. I didn't read that. Levites do not own properties. Maybe he went somewhere for a missionary escapade. And he blessed the people and they gave him land. That land, which obviously is the only property at his disposal. He sold it and brought the money to the apostles. Feast. And the apostles knew his condition. That's when they changed his name from Joseph to Barnabas. It was when, when Barnabas, when his name changed, that Ananias and his wife Sapphira were motivated. They were hoping to earn a change of name. And they went and sold. They kept back the price to make a show. It was an attempt to discredit the purity of that move was so intense 
that the Holy Ghost had to speak about it. And what is the subject matter here? Please. Those guys that were selling all, because the context is New Testament and, 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 and the perspective here is what? Consecration. So we, we could see that indeed Jesus was Lord in their midst. Because uh, self was not present. People were conquered. Like Barnabas now, there was no hope for him to get another land. He did it because he had honor for God in his heart. And a man came and wanted to act the drama of honor. And the Holy Ghost had to expose him. Peter said, Ananias, how is it that it came to your heart to lie against the Holy Ghost? Now, please, I would like us to analyze that question. Because it's the Holy Spirit that is asking. He said, how is it? He said, it means it's unfathomable. You cannot understand humanly what was at work in the heart of this brother that he was capable of doing that. How is it that he could come to your heart to lie against the Holy Ghost? If you look at it at face value, you will not see that it's a sufficient crime deserving of death. But the issue here is an issue of honor and an issue of dishonor. That act he did, trying to masquerade what was happening as if, okay, this is the move, right? People are being moved. So he wanted to number among the least. The guys that were moved were moved by God. When the property was still, when he had not sold it, it was still his. There was no need for him to make a show. Obviously, God didn't move him. But the guys that were moved, they looked like fools. The only reason why they did what they did was because they honored God in their heart. And there was no possession that was bigger than God in their hearts. And they could use anything to serve the will of God. He had not reached that level of maturity. And he wanted to make a caricature, a show out of the whole matter. Probably because Joseph earned the name Barnabas. And the Holy Spirit exposed it. Because what he did was dishonoring. And God will never keep quiet if it's on a matter that has to do with dishonor. He will never keep quiet. He will never keep quiet. That was how the man died. It is still in this matter of what? We'll round up with a word of prayer. We are not even close to covering the subject. Do you still remember the woman with the alabaster box? And she brought this fine ointment. And I need to educate you about the den world. Because in the den world, the only people that manufactured perfumery were the Arabians. Right? So if you were going to have a perfume, a fragrance, it means it was imported from Arabia. And the guy that did the importation had to rise against, he must have a system that could protect him against the bandits of the desert. Huh? Alright? So it's a great task for you to get. The perfumes were not just costly because they were not made in Israel of what made it costly was the security you had to pay for in order to ensure that your cargo reaches destination. And this woman brings it. And those days there were no bottles that have corks. And so when you unveil a perfume, you must use it that all of its content one time. And that's why there were only two times in a man's life, a woman's life, where she uses perfume on her wedding day. And when she unveils it, it's a sign of her fidelity that her whole life will be spent on this man and she accepts it. You can also use it on a burial to indicate the fact that he has spent his life. And this is the perfume that he leaves behind, the covenant. 
But that day there was no wedding. And there was no literal burial. And the woman came and unveiled the box. My question to you today is what was her motivation? Please, I need responses from the crowd. What exactly motivated her? Because the accountant, Iscariot, had already done some permutations with, with current market conditions. And according to the market profile, that was the cost of that perfume was a, way, a year's wages. Now we have gotten our minimum wage, which is what is 30,000. Can you multiply 30,000 times 12? Quickly. What? 360,000. At least, Pastor Tony, you that gave me the answer, I'm aware that you have never had a perfume like that. <laughs> you have never, the truth is, none of us in this, in this assembly right now has ever had a perfume that has costed as much as 360,000. When you are unveiling that box, you must have a good reason. Judas, when the woman was pouring the thing, he said, to what end is this waste? A man that honors God, people that have not yet said Lord to Jesus, because Judas did not say Lord. He said, to what end is this waste? He didn't add Lord. Unbelievers, we see you as wasting. Uh -huh. If your life doesn't look as if there is, you are wasting, it means you have not honored him enough for him to make a proclamation. I remember those days on campus, my lecturers called me and said, you are intelligent. This Jesus thing you are doing, you look like a contradiction. What, what were they saying? To what end is this waste? You know, you used to know me, um, Sister Ruth, how radical I was those days. Oh my God. I born with the fire. I jacked my car before. They said, to what end? Is... So when you finish from here with this thing you came to seek, so this is what you are going to be. Oh my God. To what end? To what end is this waste? And then the other disciples say, Lord, it is a waste. That means people that have said yes to Jesus, they have said Lord to Jesus. Eh? Even believers that have no insight will still share the same view with unbelievers concerning your life. And they will call you what? A waste. Even Jesus initially, when the woman began to pour the thing, did not understand what was going on. Because the Bible says, and when he understood, He didn't understand initially. The Holy Spirit brought illumination. And he told you that the poor you always have. Your ministry of philanthropy knows no end because the poor and the needy will always be among you. But me, you will not always have. This thing that she has done, she has prepared me for my burial. So Jesus was anointed for his burial beforehand. Normally, they anoint you when you are dead so that they can preserve your body. But that anointing took place beforehand and the anointing was performed by a woman. In the presence of Judas Iscariot. Do you realize that when Jesus appeared after resurrection, he appeared to a woman? I will show you the feminine connection. You know, under the old covenant, this was the requirement. This was the position of things. As long as he had remained, seed time. And harvest shall not cease. Is that true? But that is only as long as the earth remains. You know, it's possible for the earth not to remain. And then your seed time, harvest time cycle, there is no guarantee for a survivor. Hmm? Meanwhile, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. He said, give a portion to seven. 
ye to it. Why? Because thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the earth. You know the provision here that is being made here is so that your reward for giving can still come even if the earth does not remain. That's why I say give a portion to what? Seven. And ye to what? Eight. Why? Because you do not know what evil will come upon the face of the earth. Did you get that? No, you didn't get it. Cast thy bread upon the waters. You shall find it after many days. It's still, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not see. It's still the same thing. But, the principle of seed time and harvest is as long as the earth remains. And the earth will not remain forever. It means that principle is not eternal. The principle only exists in time. Is that true? Now, the Bible says give a portion to seven. Seven is completeness, perfection. Yea, to eight, you will give beyond human capacity. If you give beyond human capacity, he says, the reason why he's encouraging you to do that, it is because you do not know what evil will come upon the earth. And if you so give, even if the earth doesn't exist, your reward will still come back to you. So you give the eight. The eight paves the way for a new beginning. Beyond the old context. A man that gives the eight actually gives to meet a need on the heart of God. He's not giving to receive. He's giving to meet a need where? On the heart of God. And when you give that way, they will say you have wasted Exactly. Now, so when Jesus spoke to the woman, the result of her giving, he said, as long as this gospel be preached, what this woman has done shall be remembered for what? For a memory. No longer as long as the earth remains, but as long as this gospel is preached. That's how immortal covenants are established. A man came and wasted on God and God altered the covenant. As long as so and so, a new basis of his own covenant with you will be established by reason of your wasting. Only men that know honor can have favor in this wise in the sight of God. Are you with me? Everywhere the gospel is preached. And I found out that where God changed the goalposts for many people. There was a time hmm? Kwai was teaching us in a minister's conference. And he said the Lord appeared to him and said I will move in power and heal the sick in your meetings even if you don't pray anymore. I will do Ida Hosa. Eh? He changed the goalposts for him. You don't need a bank account. That, that was what he told Ida Hosa. Every nation you enter into, bank accounts will open to fund the reason why you came. Because it became bigger than a bank. How will it? No. Even the money in your pocket belongs to Ida Hosa. You don't just know yet. When the house comes, what will move you to release that money? You will not know. But it belongs to Ida Hosa. As far as Ida Hosa was concerned, everybody had a pocket to store money because of him. <laughs> yeah, because when he comes on the scene, he is no longer yours. God gave powers to men that understood honor. For them that honor me will I honor. And those that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. We want to pray tonight. Have you taken your offering? Take it, take it. This prayer. This prayer, I want us to pray. Really pray today. Take your offering. Keep wasting. Keep wasting. 
don't reduce the time of your sentence to the divine jail even paul himself had to be brought into captivity for him to see the visions of the church there is a captivity that god brings his choices into in order to give them shoes that can step on the shores of nations the gospel boot by which will bear witness among all nations for them that honor me i will honor do you know what many years later i went back to bsu my alma mater I met the people that were counseling me about my waist. Do you still remember? There's this vehicle. It's only in BSU you will find it. Toyota Corolla, the one they call pure water those days. What year of manufacture? What model? Yeah, those starlets and all those small vehicles. Because I was still on campus when that was a raining car and some of our lecturers bought it and I went to campus and still saw that that car was still relevant. The same people that came to advise me that I was wasting. It is by honor that men rise. No man rises outside of the corridor of any honor. Men like Hananias and Sapphira will be put to death. Men like Achan will be stoned to death. Men like Cain will become vagabonds. But the names of men like Abel, Abraham, will be written in gold in eternity. For they gave to meet a need on the heart of God. And by their offerings, God he spoke tomorrow when we come for the lecture i'm going to show you hebrews hall of faith hmm? those names of the patriarchs that were mentioned as men of faith we'll try to find out what was the reason why their name entered the list and as we go from one to the next to the last all of them enter the list because of honor you'll find it tomorrow So nobody enters that list of champions that doesn't honor God. They that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be likely esteemed. You say, oh, I'm earning 25,000. The tight, the, the no-go area in that arrangement is 2,500. May wisdom, may wisdom come to you early to know that it is an accost thing. The gates of death are open every time the accursed zone is visited. He say you can eat freely of everything, but of this tree is a no-go area. You shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, ye shall surely die. If you are finished giving your offering, you can rise. Because God in this revival... In this revival, he will never move on the hearts of men that do not honor him. His grip on your spirit will never be strong enough if you don't understand the principle of honor. Oh, Mahita, Mahando. If he has cut you in the cave, remain there. He will cause you to matter when he matters most. He will cause you to manifest in the brightest colors. Do not despise your days of little beginnings for the eyes of God looks upon it and his soul is glad that there is a man on earth that honors him much more than the estimation of mortal kind there is a man in the thief nation that honors me more than what is trending he is willing to be called the Jew so that I will be honored. There's a man in the Edoma nation. Over and above what is raining. He has decided to cut covenant with me. A covenant that binds me to him in common union. So that he will only go as far as I'm willing to take him. 
such a man are found in the land. Those are the men that God looks upon when it comes to a territory. And when you hear that a man was great in the sight of God, this is what makes it happen. We want to pray tonight. You've been passing through a challenge for many years, many years, and your life is about challenge. I assure you, that's not all about life. Can we ask that the Lord will open our hearts to Him? That we'll see Him magnified. We'll see Him so highly exalted. And there will be nothing that compares with Him. Many people in our day have forgotten the holy culture of honoring God. Iramon Samina Kuria Vaseta, he's the owner of your voice, he's the owner of your song, he's the owner of your meditation. There is nothing that you have that he never gave unto you. But honor demands that you should not touch their cost thing. Asosele makumba habrate kambasina. Likobe sevrande kumba hazai to kabalando selimande. Do you honor him? Does he shine in your heart? Indeed, as a monarch whose will you must obey, do you honor him? Is he enlarged in your heart so much that you cannot but wait to give him his person before you engage in your mon mundane pursuit? Do you honor him? Does his name reach high in your tabernacle? But there is nothing that you can do outside his name. For in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. Ale momosika bredo kombala mande. to the beat of a different drummer and pledge their allegiance to a different flag. Men that have learned the ways of God by a consistent practice of honoring His name with their lives. And the armies of the aliens will be turned back. The mouths of the lions will be stopped. Very fires will be quenched by this man. For they will be great in the sight of God.
Spirit 